If you were hired to create the blueprints for a house, you'd have to know what the customer expected, right? For example, should it have more than one floor? What rooms are needed and how big should they be? In the same way, you can't plan the work needed for any project until you know exactly what it must deliver. That's what collecting requirements is all about. It's the process you'll use to gather the stakeholders' requirements that a project must meet. The requirements provide the basis for defining the project scope. Requirements are functions or features a product must have, as well as needs that stakeholders want to have met in the project's final result. Getting to a final set of project requirements isn't as simple as just asking stakeholders what they need. Often, stakeholders start with very general ideas of what they want, and sometimes their ideas conflict with one another. You have to narrow these ideas down into specifics to make sure you understand what's really required. There are many tools and techniques you can use to collect requirements from stakeholders. You can conduct interviews with stakeholders, subject matter experts, and people who've worked on related projects. These people can help you identify what features and functions a product or service should have. Focus groups are a less formal way of collecting project requirements. In a group of stakeholders and subject matter experts, you guide an interactive discussion about what a proposed product or service must deliver. This can help you find out what expectations the stakeholders have. A related technique is a facilitated workshop. In a facilitated workshop, you bring together cross-functional stakeholders. These are stakeholders who have different perspectives on what a project should deliver. The goal is to reach consensus about product requirements. Questionnaires and surveys let you gather responses to a set of written questions. Using these tools, you can get information from a large number of people quickly. And information gathered in this way can usually be evaluated using statistical analysis. Observation is a unique way of identifying requirements. Watching how a task or process is performed can make you aware of requirements you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Examples of observation techniques are job shadowing and participant observation. Job shadowing is watching a person or group of people as they perform their job, while being a participant observer means trying out a task or process yourself. A prototype is a working model of a product. You can create a prototype early in a project and let stakeholders use it to see how well it meets their needs. This is a much more concrete way to collect requirements than simply asking stakeholders what they need. Users give immediate feedback about the product as they use it, and the project team refines the prototype and lets the focus group test it again. Once it's clear the prototype meets all requirements, work on building the final product can start. Another important class of techniques are group creativity techniques. They include mind mapping, brainstorming, and nominal group technique. A mind map is useful because it brings together a lot of ideas. It groups these ideas visually to make it clear how they relate or differ. At the center of the map is the problem to be solved. As you think of ideas, you build branches out from the center. Each branch groups related ideas. At the end of each branch, you get to specific ideas that develop from more general ones. Brainstorming is a great way to generate an unstructured list of possible project requirements. This is because it encourages everyone in a group to have their say. And what one person says often inspires someone else with a new idea. You record all the ideas stakeholders come up with so no good ideas are lost. Nobody criticizes other people's ideas to encourage participation. The nominal group technique is a prioritization tool that lets you guide a group of stakeholders in identifying which requirements are the most important. The technique can include brainstorming ideas and then ranking them. An advantage of the nominal group technique is that it lets each stakeholder in a group have a say about what's most important to them. Another important class of techniques are group decision-making techniques. Group decision-making techniques are used to decide on the final list of requirements once they are all collected. Examples include the Delphi technique if you want to maintain anonymity of the participants and repeat the rounds of voting to try to achieve agreement. There is also majority vote, where a consensus of 50% or more is achieved. There is also plurality, where the largest block in a group decides, and dictatorship, where one group member makes the final decision.
In summary, requirements are functions or features a product must have. You collect requirements from stakeholders using a number of tools and techniques. Then you must narrow these ideas down into specifics to make sure you understand what's really required.